welcome to our annual St Julian's Primary School Christmas Carol service. Uh, my name is Mr Mansfield, the very proud head teacher of this magnificent school, and it's my privilege to introduce the carol service this year. A uh, slightly different carol service to usual. Uh, uh, usually about this time we'd be heading down the road to St Julian's Baptist Church to have our carol service there, uh, all crowned in and uh, trying to fight over the best seats to get the best view of the stage. Uh, but the great news is this year, albeit virtually, you've got the best seats in the house. I hope you're sat nice and warmly and uh, comfortably on your sofas uh, with the best seats in the house. Uh, it's a wet and windy evening here as I look out of the school, uh, but I hope at least you're going to enjoy the next half an hour or so. It's been somewhat of a challenging year for us all, uh, and a year that I'm sure we're all glad to see the back of. Uh, but it's been great this autumn term to welcome the children back to school uh, and uh, the staff have really done an excellent job in trying to make everything as normal as possible uh, and it's just been so lovely to see the children coming back with huge smiles on their face, full of enthusiasm, ready to learn uh, and being with their friends and that's just been great to watch. Uh, we really felt it important to try and keep everything as normal as possible so despite it being an incredibly busy term, we've still tried to make sure we do lots of our Christmas events. Uh, so that's why we're having our carol service, that's why we've still had our Christmas concerts, uh, because we know how important and special those moments are, both for the children and for parents watching at home. We've already had one carol service at the school, which was our cluster Christmas carol service, where we got together virtually through a video call with Glass Primary and Fair Oak Nursery, two other schools in our cluster, uh, and we just had a great afternoon uh, singing carols and chatting with each other, saying what we were looking forward to about Christmas and the break. Uh, and we also had a great message from the Reverend Les Jones down at St. Julian's Methodist Church, who joined us in our virtual video call. So that was great to be a part of that. Christmas is a great time of year, uh, particularly in schools where you get to see the children get really excited and enthusiastic about the festivities coming up. Uh, but one of the things we all love, let's face it about Christmas, is uh, giving and receiving presents. And uh, I'm a big fan of receiving presents, and I've received this nice one here. This was a calendar given to me by a very kind grandma of two children who come to the school. It's a camper van, a VW camper van uh, calendar. So I'm going to enjoy looking at that each month of the year. Uh, their very kind gift that I received, despite writing in the letters not to be sending in presents, but we'll forgive that one. Uh, I've also had a nice box of chocolate. We love a box of chocolates at Christmas, let's face it. Um, but one thing I particularly enjoy every year at this time of year is going around and saying to the children, what are you most looking forward to about Christmas? And here are some of their answers. Have a look. What I want for Christmas is a new computer. A PlayStation game. I want the Christmas hat tomorrow. Tom Mill's diary. A phone. A Nintendo Switch Lite. A present pet. What's that? It's like a thing that, it's like a little dog, it's a virtual dog and it acts like a real dog and it unboxes itself. I want a bike. For Christmas I would put like a skateboard. Any time. I want uh, a phone for Christmas. I just want for Christmas is all of the Harry Potter toys. That all. Um, nine hot wheels cars. Nine. Caroline, that's it, Dice up. Skateboard. I want um, a toy fairy. I think I want a phone. I want an Anna Wow bus. I want, I want Lego Friends gear. Oh, wait, I want, I want makeup. I want Lego Friends gear. Skateboard. A tortoise. PlayStation 4. I like it. <laughs> it's like a skateboard. A magic wand. Hello, wow doll. Two walkie talkies. Cappy Cappy. What's that? It's a dog. Toy story. Dino toys. A new Lego set. Skateboard. Good. A rabbit. Barbies. Dino toys. Maybe I'd have got Star Wars. What are you hoping for? The Venom Wars. I'm hoping for a PS5. Dinosaurs. A toy robot. <laughs> I'm hoping for presents. Go on then. A robot and tons of baka bombs. Tons no. of what? Loads of baka bombs. Mm. That's really, really a A Barbie house. The LOL remix doll. A tender switch. The new Xbox. Money. <laughs> a new laptop. 
there's probably Nintendo Switch Lite. Uh, PlayStation 5. I'm hoping for Nintendo Switch Lite. I'm hoping for just some kind of PS5. <laughs> An iPhone. An iPhone? Goodness me, what are you hoping for? A phone. <laughs> TV. Guinea pig walker. Nothing because I got my because I got a puppy. New puppy. Oh, really PlayStation 4. A trampoline. Uh, I don't know. Um, clouds. A bike. I'm hoping for hoverboards. Help it snow. PlayStation. A tripod. Electric scooter. And Lego. Xbox games. Known to be on the naughty list. Wrestlers. A bike. Xbox games. iPhone 7. Oh, iPhone 11. I'm hoping for a speaker. A guitar with a new Galaxy Watch 3. A bike. An art pad. A present for my mum. A pet snake. A leopard gecko. Toys. A Nintendo Switch. A Lamborghini. I want a robot for Christmas. Uh, a hoverboard. A rugby ball. A guy. A Nintendo Switch. I want a Xbox. A foot massage. Great. Santa delivers that one to you, you can tell me all about it in the new year. I can't move on without sharing with you possibly one of the most appropriate Christmas presents that I've received this year. It was an early Christmas present and it arrived on my desk one morning uh, and I'm just going to show it to you now. Here it is. Uh, and you may think, well, that's just a face mask, Mr. Mansfield, big deal. Everybody is wearing one at the moment. We've all got one. Not like this. This is a technologically advanced face mask that connects with your smartphone uh, via Bluetooth and you can make it say messages across the front of it. So I'll just come and give you a little demonstration here. It says Merry Christmas St. Julian's Primary. You can type in on your phone whatever you want it to say, send it across via Bluetooth and it'll start scrolling across on the screen. You can also have pictures uh, or little flashing lights appear or little patterns. Uh, but what a great Christmas gift! If you're looking for a stocking filler, you've got a bit of time, uh, there you have it. Ask Santa for one of those. Uh, a little electronic face mask. Keeps you safe and entertained at the same time. What a great Christmas gift. Now we all know who brings our Christmas gifts, uh, and he actually made a surprise visit to us at St. Julian's Primary School this week. Have a look. Sit down. Have you been good? Yes, you've all been good. I know I've checked the list. You've all been nice this Christmas. And it's been great. I mean, oh, I know. I... Yes, I look Have you got any racing cars, Santa? We've got lots of racing cars. We've made. My elves have been so busy making cars. Yeah. Loads of them, yeah. Good old Santa, it was great to have him with us uh, this week and the children really loved seeing him, it was so lovely to see. Christmas is also a time for music and we've usually got lots of music going on in the school. Unfortunately we haven't been able to have our peripatetic instrument teachers in yet, uh, but we've still got some great music going on. Have a look at these two things.
Brilliant. Well done to all the children who took part in those last two little video clips. I was so proud when I watched those performances uh, and you really put a smile on my face. Well done. Another thing we usually do at this time of year is go across to Glen Amwen, the care home opposite the school. And we usually sing to them in their little lounge area as they drink teas and coffees, singing our Christmas songs or Christmas carols. Unfortunately, we weren't able to go inside this year, but as I spoke to Tina, the manager on the phone, she told me that it had been a really difficult time for them and that many of the residents had been feeling particularly down because they couldn't have the visitors and family and friends uh, go over that they usually have. We knew we had to do something and so I spoke with all the staff and the children here and we agreed that we were going to go over en masse uh, all 700 children in the school at different times throughout the afternoon to surround the entire building and sing Christmas songs to them. So that's what we did. We took a PA system over, microphones over, a keyboard, and we gave them a concert from outside. The weather stayed dry, but it was so lovely to see the windows opening and people waving out of their, uh, their apartment windows. And also, some of the residents were finishing off their lunch as we sang our Christmas songs to them. Have a little look at this.
Isn't that nice? It was really lovely to go over there for the afternoon and to sing and to wave at the residents through their windows and to spread a bit of Christmas cheer at this difficult time. Another thing I'm really proud of is our support for Uganda. As you know, back in 2015, we built some links with a number of primary schools in Mbali, Uganda, and uh, I've visited a number of times and taken staff from this school and a number of other schools as well. But one thing we've done for the past few years is paid for them to have a Christmas party as we have our Christmas parties here. We, we, I was really pleased that we raised around a million shillings that we were able to send over uh, to the school to be able to host their very own Christmas party. And this year it was bigger and better than last year. Have a look at this. I'm going to hand over now to some of our brilliant children to take us through the Christmas story, sing some carols, and to remind us about what Christmas is really all about. I hope you enjoy it. Long ago, in a village called Nazareth, Mary and Joseph were looking forward to being married. One day, Mary was at home when an angel appeared to her. Don't be afraid, I bring you good news. God has chosen you to be the mother of his son. You will have a baby and his name will be Jesus. Mary was very surprised. God chosen her, she wondered. The angel also visited Joseph. Joseph, Mary is going to have a baby called Jesus, and he will be God's son. Although they were shocked at first, Mary and Joseph were very happy. At the time when Mary was due to have a baby, the Empire Caesar Augustus decided that everyone should return to the town of their ancestors to be registered.
also had to travel to Bethlehem. It was a long journey and Mary was very tired. She travelled on a donkey with Joseph walking beside her.
set off straight away to visit him. When they arrived in Bethlehem, they found the stable with Mary and Joseph looking after the baby, who was fast asleep in the manger. The animals were all around. The shepherds were thrilled that God had chosen them to be the first to see the baby. In a country far to the east, three wise men saw a bright new star in the sky.
only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but shall have eternal life. Pastor Clive here. It's so kind of you to invite me to be part of your virtual carol service this year. I hope you're all doing okay this Christmas. So how are you feeling? It's been a strange year hasn't it? For most of us very strange. None of us really know quite what's going to happen next. Will it be a crisis, a lockdown, a struggle with work, a struggle with money? Oh such a strange year. Well just in case you didn't know you're not alone. You're surrounded by people who, no matter what impression they try to give you, they're feeling the same on the inside as you, feeling the same things you are. And the fact is, we're all having a tough year, me included. So what can we do about it? Well, I remember one person saying to me once, 
If you aim at nothing, you'll hit it every time. And sometimes when things are tough, the temptation is just to give up and let it all wash over you. But that same person said to me, to change things for the better, you have to aim at something good. Well, did you know that God sent his son Jesus to be that something good for us, that light that we can all aim for? Humble, loving, patient, caring, always giving, self-sacrificing. Jesus was everything that you and I consider good. And when Jesus came to live among us, it was to share his life with us, to help us to be able to make a difference in our own lives. Yes, he came to inspire us to amazing heights of goodness for ourselves, for our families and for our communities. Well, last night I heard someone on TV say, I haven't got into the spirit of spending this year, but I think I have found the spirit of Christmas. The simple things of sharing more time together, appreciating each other more and finding little simple things to say I love you. I thought that was fantastic. Sometimes tough things do that, don't they? They help us to see what's of real value. And when we share those good things, especially in tough times, it's as though we find a touch of heaven, of God with us. It's why I believe that the true spirit of Christmas is summed up in the name that the angels gave Jesus, which was Emmanuel, which means God with us. Because you see, when the things of heaven are here with us, then it's truly how Christmas should be. And when the angel said to Mary, do not be afraid, I bring you good tidings of great joy, for unto you this day in the city of David is born a saviour and he is Christ the Lord. They were sharing the good news that Jesus was beginning the process of heaven coming down to earth to be with us and by God's spirit to be with us to the very end of time. And the great truth is if God by his spirit is with us we not, need not be afraid. Do you remember the angel said don't be afraid? And my prayer for you all this Christmas is that you will know God's heavenly presence and the presence of heaven with you in your celebration and in your relationships and that you will know the wonderful peace of heaven that Jesus came to bring and the love of Jesus I know will be such an inspiration to you this Christmas that if we allow it to affect us all that happens to us will be more than special it will be spectacular like heaven come to earth. Well, we can all pray the prayer of the carol which says, O oh, come to my heart, Lord Jesus, there is room in my heart for you. And if we do so, I know that the blessings will flow from his presence with us. May you have a wonderfully blessed time. Lots of love from me, Pastor Clive, and oh, Auntie Jeanette sends her love too. Bye. They say there's a big man who lives far away, supposedly jolly, but it's hard to say. I've never seen him and neither have you, but children believe I'll guess that'll do. He's known as our owner, with many a quip, no time for a chat, he's involved in his work. He keeps to himself for most of the year, I reckon we're grateful he doesn't appear. We send him requests for particular needs, we never hear back, who knows if he heeds? We try to be good to give his arm a twist, to merit our place on his blessed little list. And maybe one day if we do what we should, he'll give us our things just so long as we're good. I've had it to hear, I'm calling his bluff, he's a strange moralistic dispenser of stuff. Granted this rant is a strange one to pick, but listen, I'm not really after St Nick. As strange as he is and Santa is odd, I'm really addressing most folks to you of God. It's God who is here, some distant big guy, some ancient invisible Saint Nick in the sky. He sees when you sleep, he knows when you wake, he's watching and waiting to spot your mistake. And just like the Santa requests we hand in, we want all his things but we don't want him. That's our connection with all Father Christmas. We might dress it up but it's essentially business. Throughout the year, they behave as our owners. 
Christmas comes round, we're expecting our bonus. Just give us our gifts, Nick. We've been good enough. Now please push on now we've got all your stuff. Santa's interesting, curious and quirky, but nobody wants him to share their turkey. I'm sure his ho ho ho's are sublime, but I fear what he'll say when he's drunk all our wine. That's all to Nick, but picturing's true, it's how we imagine what God is like too. But Christmas was ends with a stunning not so. The one from on high was born down below. He drew alongside forever to dwell, God in the flesh, Emmanuel. Born in a stable, wriggling on straw, fully committed to life in the raw. Santa gets things and then goes away. Jesus shows up to befriend and to stay. Santa rewards those with good behaviour. Jesus draws near to the broken our saviour. If you don't like God, I think I know why. You probably think you see Nick in the sky. You're right to reject that faraway stranger. This Christmas, look down to the God in the manger.